so this is a this part of the series of videos uh, made on non-parametric statistics a course in the university KNUST offered by mathematics and statistics student right so in the previous videos or sections we talked about the one sample runs test and then we we didn't actually have access to the runs table all right so uh, typically the examples we did we couldn't look for the critical values the pk1 and k2 on the runs table all right so we'll quickly do that and then we'll continue right so we said that for the runs test for small samples n1 and n2 should be less or equal to 10 right and remember n1 is always less or equal to n2 all right so these critical values the k1 and k2s right so these critical values the k1 and then the k2s were the ones that we supposed to look for them on the runs distribution table all right runs distribution table and then yeah, but we'll do that with the help of to to get your k1 and k2 to get k1 and k2 right all what you need is to know your n1 and n2 okay so know your n1 and n2 that's the other thing and know your alpha value so with these things you should be able to find your k1 and then k2 with this three information you should be able to find your k1 and k2 all right okay so let's just look at how the runs table or distribution table look like right so this is a typical distribution function for the number of runs in sample sizes okay so if you want to look at look for your critical values remember these are the critical values these are the key values two three four five six seven right these are your critical values up to 20 okay and then the first thing you have to locate is to locate your n1 and n2 so i told you that you need your sample sizes look for n1 and n2 all right so you have two three you have two ten all right so it has been arranged just look at your pair maybe your n your n1 was a seven and n2 is eight you look for that and then along that line you should be able to locate your alpha values and then trace them to your individual key k1 and k2 values okay so let's just look at some example so this is a typical example let's look for a typical example so remember that this one we are supposed to work this work this find check whether the sequence there is randomly generated all right using alpha value of 0 0.10 right so that is what we want to do the alpha value is 0 0.10 so when we look at the first instance our n1 is 5 our n2 is 5 and our alpha value is 0 0.10 all right so per the rules we have to look for we have to look for that probability all right that's probability we have to look for that probability we have to look for that probability okay that um we will say that maybe r right will be less or let's say equal to k1 okay so and then we expect that that probability will be less or let's say equal to alpha over 2 okay so the alpha value that we are given we divide it by 2 we want to look for k1 
So we divide the alpha value by 2. So in our case, we divide by 2 and get 0 0.05, right? So we we'll look for that. You know, when you say R less or equal to K1, then we are trying to see that if this is the diagram I'm drawing, let me draw this, then this is the distribution, all right? And then let's say this is K1. Right, let's say this is k1 then we are trying to look for all the probability the area under the curve to this direction all right this is what we are trying to look for the area under the curve from that direction okay so we are looking at the area under the curve from that direction in that area we expect the value that we will pick for k1 that area there should be less or equal to alpha over 2 okay that area there should be less or equal to half over 2. And then if you are looking for K2, K2, we are trying to say that K2 is also the probability, right? The probability that our R value, our R value must be greater or equal to let's say k2 all right and that probability should also be less than alpha on 2 okay so what you're saying is that we also want to look at the area under the curve also to the to the right of the distribution okay so what we are trying to say is that okay if you find out that value k2 such that the area under that curve from k2 going to the end of the distribution and that value that probability is less than or equal to half over two then that k2 can be used as a critical value if you find that k1 such that the probability from the left towards up to k1 is less or equal to half over 2 then that k1 value can be used okay so what we are trying to say that when you look at this distribution for you to be for you to be random or for data sets to be random then we expect that you don't fall here neither are you falling here so these are kind of the rejection region Right. and this is where we accept um, everything so when your r lies here then we can see that uh, you are kind of uh, you are kind of very um, random all right so we are trying to find out those two endpoints k1 k2 that when you are above it you will not be random when your run run is below it you will not be random and then we eliminate those areas and then concentrate on the areas that we would accept okay so that's what we do so in our case here our n1 is 5 n2 is 5 so we first have to go and look for 5 5 5 okay first have to go and look for 5 5 on our runs table so on our runs table we we'll look for 5 5 all right so this is 5 5 this is 5 5 and remember that we would look at the probability we said that for the first value the extreme and the k1 we look at the value the probability that is less than our alpha over 2 okay and less or equal to our alpha over 2 and we see that this one is very less but this is kind of less or equal to right so we we'll look at the maximum of them this which is this one this is far more than that so we won't consider that we we'll just take this one so this is our probability and this probability we see here is less or equal to 0 0.05 so we we'll choose that i will trace this up okay so when we trace is that the value there is three so we we'll pick three as our k1 three will be our k1 okay three will be our k1 right now 
when we are done that way we have done this we have to also look for our k2 but remember that as you are increasing you remember the probability 2 is increasing right probability 2 2 is increasing so if i come and then i pick i pick let's say 9 and i want to know the area from 9 to the last value which is let's say 10 the area from 9 to 10 then what i have to do is that i have to subtract the value there which is this from 1 to know the exact area from 9 to 10 all right so if i pick this 0 0.960 and i take one one one, one minus this value will give me a 0 0.040 all right which is also the area moving from 8 to 10 all right so the area moving from 8 to 10 right so if you picture this this like we are trying to look at the rejection areas so you see that from 8 to 10 the area there is also less or equal to 0 0.05 all right so in that case our 8 will be traced right our 8 will be used as, as our k2 even though the area there look this area is from the left it's from here up to that so it's a summation of the areas from here up to this point but we just want to know the area from this point to this end so to do that we just take this value from a one okay all right so our k1 and k2 according to this this question our k1 all right according to this we said we got a three right our k1 we got a three and our k2 also we got a three uh, we got a eight you can see that when you you draw this it happens that if this is the distribution it happens that our three will be somewhere here and then our eight is somewhere here right and then what i'm trying to say is that areas are accumulated from this point up to this point all right so if i write an area here as zero point this area is zero point zero four what i'm trying to say is that then the area from the end up to the line where three is is zero point zero four right but if i write the whole the area here as zero point nine six zero then i'm trying to say the area from this end up to that line right but i want to know the area here okay so to get the area here i have to subtract this area from a one and that will be the area here which is also zero point zero four right so it happens that these areas are the areas which are less than or equal to our half of our alpha value the same thing applies to this one all right so it means we take this guy and this guy and then eight and three will be our critical values okay and remember that when you get your critical value then go and compare them with your with your test statistic which is the number of runs okay all right so that is what was done so in the first remember the runs was two the number of runs your test as it was two i remember that the two right the two that we had was per the rejection rule you reject each note if r is less or equal to so we expect that before you be the data set will be random then we expect the run the number of runs should be more than k1 right but less than k2 so that means you should be between it should be between k1 and k2 by happening that 2 is not between k1 and k2 so we see that reject h naught and we'll conclude that the data is not what random right so this is how you can use the runs uh, table to be able to do uh, one sample test okay right so that is that